No, I want you to find out exactly how much it would cost for Beyonce to be in the video. Yes, of course it's for science. We're recording? Oh, okay. Well, you can just edit this out later. I know I'm the editor. Okay. Pi. One of the most famous numbers of all time. Right alongside Stacy's mom's and the exact number of Star Wars films that should exist. You know how many it is. In this video, I want to talk about one of Pi's most fascinating characteristics and how it might just be possible for Pi to beat Pokemon Sapphire all by itself. Assuming I manage to successfully film and edit this entire thing in the next 48 hours, then this is being uploaded on March 14th, Pi Day. A holiday celebrated only by really super cool people with admirable social lives, uh, like me. A few months ago, I stumbled across a Twitch stream called The Winning Sequence. The title of the stream was Pi Plays Pokemon Sapphire. At first glance, it seemed to be some kind of spin on Twitch Plays Pokemon, but spend even one minute in this stream and it becomes very evident that this is something different. But what's going on here? How does a number play Pokemon? Basically, The Winning Sequence is using a computer program that parses Pi's digits one by one. Each number from zero to nine is mapped to a different input on the Game Boy Advance. Zero and five are both on start, two, four, six, and eight are on the D-pad directions, three and nine are on B, and one and seven are on A. But can running through Pi's digits really get us to the Hall of Fame? First, we need to understand some of Pi's more interesting characteristics. Let's go now, and this is really exciting, to Beyonce to explain. Did you tell them it was really important? And they still didn't? Okay, well. All right, well, it turns out that no sponsors are willing to pay the requisite price to sponsor a video which requires, requires, one minute of Beyonce's time. So I guess this video is just gonna have to be sponsored by viewers like you. Thank you, that's right, you just got pbs These videos are incredibly time intensive and thus very expensive to make. So I've opened up a Patreon and you can find the link at the top of the description. There's two tiers. The first tier unlocks access to bonus content that I've cut from my videos, either because it didn't mesh well or because it's four straight minutes of me trying to explain a certain thing, like the video that's up there right now. It's cut from the fly video and it's me trying to explain why you need the drag force in order to take off, it's really quite something. The second tier also includes access to all those clips, but also puts your name at the end of my videos since you're basically producing the show at that point. So if you like what I make and, this part's important, have enough disposable income to support somebody on Patreon, consider supporting the show. It really genuinely helps. All right, back to the video. Pretty famously, Pi has an infinite number of digits. How many can you do by heart? I can do 3.141592635358, oh, oh no, please don't leave. Now, the digits in Pi seem kind of random. If you just pick a random spot along the list of digits, say a thousand digits in, it's just gonna be some random group of numbers, right? But a common question people have is, out of those infinite digits in the decimal expansion of Pi, which number from zero to nine appears the most often? Personally, I'm pulling for six. According to a website by Eve Anderson, in the first 10 million digits of pi, each of the numbers zero through nine appear almost precisely equally as often. Dang it! The biggest disparity between appearances of the numbers is only about one or 2,000. At 10 million digits in, that is really wild. Perhaps this feels counterintuitive, or maybe it makes sense to you. After all, if you were writing an infinitely long number and just had a computer program running that generated a random number for each place as you went on forever, you probably would wind up with an even distribution of all the numbers, right? Well, in the case of pi, we don't actually know for sure. In mathematics, when a number has an equal distribution of all of the digits, it's called a normal number. So for us in base 10, basically any normal number will have an exactly equal distribution of all the numbers zero through nine. Normal numbers are super interesting because as a direct consequence of all of the numbers appearing equally as often forever, every single string of integers can be found somewhere within the number. Let's imagine, for example, a 10-digit sequence somewhere within a normal number. Each of the 10 digits is essentially some random number, zero to nine, right? But let's roll them all randomly and say we got five ones and five sevens. To keep the distribution even, there'll just be a small dearth of ones and sevens somewhere else in the number to compensate, and the other numbers will appear a bit more often somewhere else to compensate. The distribution overall, if you take the entire infinitely long number, will be kept consistent throughout. Even if you had a run of three million sevens, eventually the number will even out. Now we think pi is a normal number. As of 2022, computers have calculated pi out to 62 trillion digits, and so far it looks pretty evenly distributed. 
But normality is a remarkably difficult thing to prove. How do you go about proving that something that is infinitely long and seemingly random has a set distribution? Without going too deep into the number theory of why such a proof is so difficult to find, let's talk about a number that has been proven to be normal. Champernowne's constant is probably the most famous example of a proven normal number. While studying normal numbers, David Champernowne established the constant like this. In whatever base you're working in, you simply concatenate, or squish together, all of the positive integers. In base 10, the number reads 0 0.12345678910111 1314 and so on, infinitely. Now, for this number, it's pretty obvious and easily provable that it's normal. After all, every number will be included in Champernowne's constant at some point, since it's just counting up forever. Therefore, it must be normal. But with pi, it remains an open question whether or not it is definitively normal. Again, we're pretty sure, but we still don't have any definitive proof. But if we assume for a moment that it is, which again, it probably is, then every single integer sequence can be found somewhere within pi. On the website, the Pi Search page, which has genuinely been operating since the 90s, you can search for any string of numbers within Pi. Unfortunately, they only have the website searching through the first 200 million digits. But even with that many, we can glean some pretty interesting information. They have this breakdown of the likelihood of finding a number of a given length within just the first 100 million digits. If you're an American searching for your phone number with the three digit area code and the seven digits that follow, so a 10 digit number, there is less than a 1% chance of your phone number being present in the first 100 million digits. It's just not nearly a large enough sample size to find a specific number of that length. Okay, but why does this matter to us? Well, let's go back to our problem. We need a sequence of numbers that will beat Pokemon Sapphire. Imagine how many digits that's going to have to be and how unrealistic it will be to just randomly stumble into it. We need to walk through every major part of the game, win every story battle, win enough wild battles and trainer battles to have a high enough level to beat the game, and then get through the Elite Four and Champion fights without messing up. With every single input being mapped to only one or two digits, this is going to be an unbelievable number of inputs. The winning sequence has been running for over two years and has parsed more than 70 million digits of pi, and the furthest it's gotten is a few steps away from the first rival battle north of Old Ale Town. That's it. Granted, lots has happened. We saw a shiny Wurmple about 10 million digits ago, which was exciting. But probably more important is that as of recording this, Pi has a level 81 Sceptile from battling way too many wild Pokemon in the first two routes. So if it were to manage to progress through the rest of the game, it would very likely be strong enough to win every single required fight. But in reality, Pi spends the vast majority of its time just hanging out in Little Root Town or in the pause menu. After all, it doesn't know it's playing Pokemon Sapphire. It doesn't know anything. It's a number. But will it ever win? Probably not in our lifetime, or anyone's. It's time to introduce you to easily my favorite YouTube video from 2022. Can you beat Pokemon Fire Red while blind and deaf by Mart Snack? This delightfully intriguing video dissects what would be necessary to construct a list of inputs that can beat Pokemon Fire Red every single time without fail, regardless of random events like wild encounters, crits, and so on, without ever seeing or hearing the game. I won't spoil the video as you should really just watch it for yourself, but it's not a spoiler to tell you that the list is over 230,000 inputs long. Granted, it accounts for a ton of edge cases and also maps inputs that are special like D-pad plus B button and also an input for waiting, making a list of 12 inputs, which Pi can't do with only 10 possible numbers to work with. If we apply this same logic to Pokemon Sapphire though, and Pi's only 10 possible numbers, we're going to be looking at a list of at least 300,000 digits in a decently correct order to beat the game from where Pi is at right now. Obviously, given the infinite nature of Pi, if it is a normal number, this sequence of exactly correct inputs that never makes any mistakes for tons of hours exists out there somewhere. It's just going to be unbelievably unlikely to find. Now, granted, saying that it's likely is weird given that the infinite nature of Pi means that there are an infinite number of these winning sequences out there, some of them exact, some of them really long. But if we loosen the criteria on what a winning sequence looks like, I think you are by definition more likely to be already inside of one. Again though, I want to emphasize the sequences are still so long that the likelihood is essentially zero. What I'm trying to say is that I think it's more likely that we see the heat death of the universe before Pi sees the credits in Pokemon Sapphire. Which is a little bleak, but that's not really the point of this silly little playthrough, is it? 
This is more just a fresh, fun new look into a number that has captured mathematicians' imaginations for thousands of years. And for that reason, I really love the winning sequence just how it is. Okay, but what if we made some like really slight tweaks just to like increase the chance of winning by like just a little bit? I can't guarantee that what I'm about to say will work, but I've done a decent amount of Pokemon challenge running and I think I can help. Here are my ideas. First of all, we cannot have two digits mapped to the start button. The only time I can think of where the start button is required to progress through Pokemon Sapphire is to teach the HMs required to progress through the game. That's fewer than eight required start presses, as opposed to the thousands of A presses and thousands of D-pad presses required. So the first thing I would do is reassign zero or five to another button. But what should we do with our stray input? Reassigning it to one of the D-pad directions would probably not be wise, since giving one of the directions more weight than the others would undoubtedly create problems. The B button is nice since it cancels out of menus and also advances text. In battle, it can't force you to run away, which is nice, but it does back out of move selection and we have to select moves to win. However, since it backs out of the Pokemon menu and the bag menu, menus we wind up in a lot on accident, without having to maneuver the cursor over the cancel button, I think the B button might still be the more beneficial option. However, of course, the A button is required to interact and select moves, so it might be the better option. Or, 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 we could use Champernoun's constant instead, because right now, pi being a normal number is still an open question, right? So we don't actually know that the winning sequence is out there, so if we use Champernoun's constant, it's definitely in there somewhere, right? It's just gonna count up and up and up until it finds the winning sequence. Okay, what about this? How about we change to base 13? In base 13, pi is now gonna have three more digits to work with, as well as the one we just stole from the start button, which means we can map an extra input to all four D-pad directions, not weighting any of them too much unnecessarily. Or we could just let pi do its thing. This stream is wonderful and delightful and stupid, and I think it's perfectly enjoyable as is. Now, do I think the winning sequence exists within pi somewhere? Yes. Assuming pi is a normal number, then yes, absolutely. There are an infinite number of winning sequences. Again, we'll likely never see it, but it's out there somewhere. And I personally find that kind of reassuring. Regardless though, happy Pi Day, and if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.